Ruby is a love it or leave it show for anime fans, much like the critically acclaimed Avatar series. Recently they've introduced a new Grimm that's origins are much older than the show itself. That creature is a Knuckle Levy. Hey guys, it's Spamida here once again, and I thought I'd celebrate some Scottish mythology love in one of my favourite shows by telling you why you should even care. Now if you haven't seen it, the fight with the Knuckle Levy takes place in Volume 4, Chapter 12 of the show and it's currently free to watch on Rooster Teeth on YouTube so please go and check it out. Even if you don't follow the show, the fight is still amazing and for a first time viewer it's absolutely brilliant. But anyway, let's begin. The Knuckle Levy is a tale from the Orkney Islands, a very small collection of islands in the north of Scotland, but it's so densely rich with mythology that their tales go on by their own name. People refer to these tales as Arcadian. Now this particular beast is actually a ruthless and powerful elf. Think less Rice Krispie Squares and more skinless water demon. This creature has a duality with water as it lives in the sea and some may say that it protects it but is deadly scared of running water like burns and rivers. It's known to go on apocalyptic purges of agriculture and cattle when it is angered by local villagers who would burn seaweed to create kelp. It would destroy crops and kill livestock with gestures just as simple as breathing in their direction. The beast is of black and blood and yellow veins, all too visible mounded on its skinless fleshy body and this creature is unstoppable by the hands of mortal men. Your only hope is to pray that you come across a body of running water or it begins to rain as it also has a hatred for rain. That is of course unless you're in the favour of the sea mither, the all-encompassing god that keeps the demons and evils of the sea at bay, who many ancient settlers of the islands would seek protection from before travelling or taking part in long fishing expeditions. Whilst this creature is presented as a centaur-like being forged of man and horse, Many believe that this is simply to trick humans into believing that it's simply a man on horseback in dark nights. The elf has only one true eye found on its horse's head, which burns red with the flames of evil. The knuckle Eevee is also known to have fin-like hooves, and other myths have noted that it has other aquatic features like a fin on its back. Now as for the show, how well did they represent the beast? Well this is how the story arc breaks down. Our main team come across a village pillaged by bandits, but Lairin spots an all too familiar hoof mark. It's been imprinted in the mud. It's of a Grimm that's pillaged his village, the village that he grew up in as a boy. The visuals of the beast are astonishing. They don't even show it until the final battle with the beast. All you'll see is its silhouette in a shroud of smoke, or in its shadow, much like many of the tales of the Knuckle Eevee itself. Its presence has brought devastation and fear into the town. In fact, throughout the show, we only really get to see the desolation in its wake without actually seeing the creature itself. The only thing that made us recognise that it's the same creature that has achieved these devastating feats is the same signature hoof mark on the ground. When we finally meet it, it breathes smoke and we can see that the creature has many scars of battle but has never been defeated. I personally thought that what they tried to do with this was very impressive. In fact, the lore of the beast's actions are spot on with the legend. But I do think there's a few minor things that could have been changed. For example, they throw away all the water-based stuff like its flipper-like feet, and it was portrayed in the show as if it lurked in the mountains. But fundamentally, that stuff doesn't really matter. Whilst yes, the show did get the myth wrong in a sense. But if you really strip the Knuckle Levy down to what its basic idea is, it's a force of nature and retribution. It's both a pure anger and death. And what the show has done is take that and make it fit their universe. And when adapting something from cryptozoology or myth, sometimes it's best not to follow the myth word for word, but instead make it something greater within the context of the universe that it's being applied to. I think that it's absolutely fantastic, and it's a great merging of these two myths. And in a show that has shown so much respect to other mythologies, I'm happy that they're actually delving into Scottish mythology for a change. Now I was actually looking for a little poem or a folklore story to share with you guys to let you kind of understand the way that it was portrayed uh, in its original Ocarian setting, but I couldn't really find one. That's because there was this song from a game that kind of drowned out all web searches of it. I won't pain you by singing it or playing the terrible Scottish accent that it's sung in, but if you'd like to hear it I'll leave a link in the description. It's absolutely hysterical, it's from the Bard's Tale series. I believe it was a 2004 remake. But I think that wraps it up for today's video guys. I'm currently going through a couple of things just now. Videos might have been slowed down. It breaks down to my grandfather needing a little bit of help now. And I'm in the process of moving and helping him. Um, but I think I'm going to start every week that I don't make a video. I'll do a really long live stream. I'd really like to start talking to you guys and I think that would help that. I now have the resources to do that so it should be relatively easy. But I'll see you guys next time.